great show today and a piece of news I'm really excited about. A hundred new species have been discovered. A dragon, a real dragon, stopped a housing development in Australia. And maybe the funnest new game we've ever played on the pod. Let's get into it. Coming your way. <laughs> Wrong music. Oh, yeah. Let's start with the outro music. That's it. right. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Welcome. All right. <laughs> Let's do an uh, episode backwards like that one Seinfeld episode. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> well, Kyle fucked up. Yeah. But. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. All, right. All right. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> I was ready to sign off. Yeah. Keep I was going to finish my beer. Absolutely. Yeah. Ready for a nap. All right. Well, welcome to the Wild Times podcast. I'm your host, Forrest Galante, the broologist. On my right, Papa P himself. <sighs> What's up, buddy? Big size. How are you? Just. <sighs> That was more of like a refreshing. Ah, it was. Yeah. That's true. Refreshing fat ha- tire. Sip. Happy to be here, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your mind about that sigh after I introduce the professor, PhD in podcasting, Mister Retap. Yeah, I, I don't really do any of the PhDing anymore, but I will say, it's uh, true. Kyle slept here again. He's dedicated <laughs> to his craft. I think he lives here. I I'm telling you, yeah. I got a camera here. I've seen him come in and out, and just comes in here and wax it. You've seen him come. Got it. Nice. Yay! Do you, do you know why? A is the first letter of the alphabet. Because <laughs> uh, it's like the easiest sound to make. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. The oh, real, my. real thing. Look at it. Kyle can look it up for us. That sound that you just made, that that refreshing ah uh, sound, yeah. is where A became the first letter of the alphabet in the English language. Because okay. it's the the most natural sound that we make. Interesting. Sure. Is the letter is that ah, which is why A is the uh, first letter. Well, also, what you say when you like whack your finger. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. If you uh, a, also, if you pay attention to your kids, they just say anything with an ah. It's like mama, dad, das, saba, like anything. Those are, those are M's and D's, but yes. No, no, the A, the A, <laughs> you moron. Dude, I, I asked my buddy, I was like, hey, do you see anything in your four-year-old that's like definitively from you? And he's like, yeah, deep sighing. Oh, interesting. <laughs> he's like, I'm just constantly sighing around the house. I saw, f- I saw a funny meme about a dog doing a deep sigh, and it's like, what do you... The dog has nothing to worry about. It wakes up, gets fed, and sleeps, lies on the couch, and then looks at you and goes, <sighs> <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I talked about how I have a skunk issue, and I've gotten to the bottom of it. Uh-oh. And it's created right. a real problem for me. Okay. Yeah. Tell us more. So I heard a bunch of scurrying around. Like, it sounded like it was, like, in my fucking ceiling. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. And not good. It, it is. It's in oh, the wow. ceiling? It fucking... Cl- so I had an exterminator come. No. And he, and he went up on the roof... And there was like a little tiny gap where like two joists or whatever met. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this and there and there's a ton of skunk poop on the really? roof next to it. Uh oh. Wow. And the skunk had like picked away, picked away, and made a little hole. Uh-oh. What a bastard. And, and got into he's my got, ceiling. He's got a perch. How did yeah. you know it was a skunk and like not some other oh, animal? I, I didn't suspect. I didn't put two and two together. I thought it was probably like a rat or a fucking. Wait, but did, yeah. didn't you see it? Didn't you see a spotted I, skunk? I had or seen something? the skunk, but yeah. I wasn't like, oh, that's the thing that's in my ceiling two sure. two weeks when, later. Yeah. So they're crafty. They're Dude. crafty little bastards. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when I when I first moved into my house, a couple of years ago, the, in the wall behind my bed, there was lots of fucking scurrying going on. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, well, yeah, of course, rats. And like, I called a bunch of exterminators. It was going to cost me $600, right? And then one day, instead of scurrying, I, I realized that the scurrying is flapping of wings. There was a, there was a bird in there, birds of some type. Inside the wall? In the wall. And so I, I, my, I, I myself, like, I was like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm, I'm going to be able to find. I found where they're going in, dude. And I waited because the other thing I noticed was it always went away during the day. Yeah, and then they they'd come back food. at night. Right, so yeah. it was bats. No, no. It was, it was, well, it could yep. be bats. You're right. It could so be bats. So you have no idea what the end of your story is. No, I do. I, I, <laughs> if you would shut up, I'll finish it. Right. So I went and got some of that, uh, you know, that foam stuff that hardens and cracks. I found where it was going in. And during the day when it was gone, I filled it in. Never came back. Never been so proud of myself, dude. That's, Good job. Yeah. I saved myself like six, seven hundred bucks, these exterminators. There you go. Yeah. You know how I would have handled that? You would have knocked down the wall and I would have up a new one. You would have charged through the wall like uh, the Kool Aid guy. Like those a yak. Are, those are both good ideas. I would have just gone and got a, bought a big python and released him in the wall. Oh, that's Ooh. smart. Like I now have yeah. a python in the wall. Yeah, that's yep. to cool. Eat the bird. Mm-hmm. So a buddy of mine, uh, he lives in the Northeast. Good friend from high school. Got out of his was working until the evening. Lives in Connecticut now. Okay. Got out of his uh, car, parked in front of his garage, mm-hmm. and a bat 
flew into the back of his head. No way. Just <laughs> yeah. nailed him. That's Just funny. fucking pinged him in the back Bizarre. of the head. So he goes inside. He's a bit of a nervous Nelly. Goes yeah. inside <laughs> and he asks his wife, he's like, can you look at my head and mm-hmm. yeah. see if it's bleeding? Like, did it bite me? I don't know. Right. Mm-hmm. No blood. So if that happened to you, what would you do? Just go to bed? Yeah. Well, sure. he, he, his wife convinced him to go to the ER. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Get rabies shots oh my and God. shit. Well, he goes to the ER and they're like, yeah, it didn't bite you. Uh, but if it's saliva, like something about the saliva, they're like, you need to get rabies shots. Oh, God. So now it's like nine o'clock at night and he had to get the he had to get rabies shots. Which and is, he has to go back again because he's a big guy. Yeah. yeah. And get more rabies shots. I'm pretty sure rabies is a three three dose course. It's It's based on your weight. Yeah. Mm, and yeah. uh I'd and, have to do ten. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's incredibly <laughs> expensive too. Kyle, oh, look this it? up quickly. Google how much does it cost to get rabies shots? It's like massively expensive. How many times have you had to get them? Zero. <laughs> BTG's gotten like ten rounds of rabies shots. Never got them once. Interesting. Oh, never mind. I'm way off. Forty to seventy five dollars per dose. Huh. Oh, that's for dogs. Oh yeah. No, look for humans. I'm sure it's like <laughs> massively expensive. Yeah. I mean it's there we wild, go. Dude. Yeah. Between three and seven thousand dollars for a shot. The problem with rabies is that the doctor just goes like, "It's a small chance, but if you have it, you're you die. Uh, yeah. Yep, you're just gonna take these giant needles. Big, I've never, thick I've needles. never, never gotten it. Never gotten a rabies. It's it's vaccine. very rare, dude. But I've watched a video of somebody with with rabies and the the uh, somebody a, or an animal. No, no, a person. They have it on tape. It's like in black and white. And uh, it's on YouTube. It's it's frightening, dude. The guy is terrified of water. Yeah. Will not drink it. Yeah. And like, how crazy is it that this illness can affect your brain so much yeah. that that you genuinely become terrified of water, of it's, swallowing your own spit? It's like the uh, the the new movie where the cordyceps take over your brain and yeah dude everything i've been seeing it really is. i've been seeing cordyceps and other mushrooms that take over bodies of insects everywhere now it's a thing it's yeah, it's, they, well, it's trendy HBO had a very popular series yeah. about it so. the last yeah. of us all right well speaking of being afraid of water what if i told you in some news here mm-hmm. okay that recently <laughs> scientists discovered a hundred not one a hundred new species in the deep ocean I'd hate it. I, I would just be it. like, you're lying. Next. Hey, can we get our jingle? Come on, Kyle. What's in the news? Sorry. He's just trying to sign off every time. This is crazy. Uh, what the hell is going on What are you doing? Here. It's a nightmare. He played he, two jingles at once. I honestly think he got hammered last night and he's still fucked up. <laughs> Dude, he did for sure. What's in the news? All right, so what's going on <coughs> with this story? Over 100 never-before-seen species discovered along deep sea mountain range which is pretty exciting. Um, yeah, so this underwater I just like mountain range, there's a deep sea mountain range. Isn't that nice? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So this underwater mountain range off the Chilean coast was recently explored by a team of scientists. They used ROVs, which are remote underwater vehicles, okay. to explore the depths up to, uh, I think it was 15,000 or so feet down. So really, so really crazy. deep. Yeah. yeah. Love What's this. Mariana's Trench? Like 30,000? I'm not sure, it's, but it's, it's pretty more. deep. Damn. Um and yeah, while they were down there uh, di- poking around, they found some seamounts. And as we've talked about on this pod a number yeah. of times, seamounts are extinct volcanoes that often still have hydrothermal energy and can create entire ecosystems around that hydrothermal energy. Mm-hmm. And in exploring these these ecosystems, they found over 100 new species what that kind were of previously stuff? undocumented. Um, so yeah, it's ongoing because they're still finding stuff. But so far... Kyle, maybe you can pull this up. They found a little, like a frogfish or a toadfish, bright oh, red. Look at that thing. Yeah, look at that. And so the, these frogfish are really interesting animals. That one looks hairy, which is incredible. Yeah. But yeah. Um, see how they use their pectoral fins down below? They use them as feet. Oh, so they that's actually so cool. walk around the sea floor using those pectoral fins. And then scroll down, Kyle, if I remember correctly, there's some crustaceans. Wow. Yeah, what's this like guy? A, squat, a squat lobster. lobster. A squat lobster. Dude, yeah. that is so cool looking. So, so basically, it's an underwater mountain range, and then like up on the peaks of the mountains is where they found this shit? Not really on the peaks, just sort oh. of scattered throughout their events. And it, what's cool is when you think about it, like, Imagine a volcano. You can see the plume of smoke from miles away. Mm-hmm. You can't obviously don't have that much visibility oh, in the deep that? ocean, but they they spot these plumes basically of hot water, and then they go and explore around them. And yeah, all of these new species oh. of coral, 
new squid species. Like, I'm sure those urchin are undescribed. It's basically all new stuff. Like, everything they're finding. Look at that freaking fish. Dude, this is crazy. And how they have, like, HD video of it is amazing. Look at that. Look at that. Go back to that. I know. Go back. Look look at that fucking lab, dude. I was going to say, that's the nicest video village I've ever seen. Ever. Ever. Remember when we used ROVs to, like, find turtles and stuff? You got, like, one crappy little screen. Nothing works. (laughs) Oh, and we had to, like... Yeah, we had to watch it after we What's pulled the this guy? out. Yeah. Is that like a, That's a squid? Dumbo octopus? octopus. Dumbo octopus. Mm-hmm. I mean, the reason that this type of story has been on the pod a few times is basically just every time we send something down there, we yeah. find new shit. Anytime mm-hmm. we can find, because the deep ocean's a desert. Most of it's just sand and nothing. But anytime you can find one of these areas, it's a beacon for life. Mm-hmm. It, it's just covered. Kyle, go back to that video for a second. I wanna, we're going to play a little game here. Scroll back. Back, 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 stop. Buck, buck, buck. Nope, keep going. That's um, a, whatever that there, is. Right cool. there. So I've been using Rocket Money since we signed up. Yep. And yesterday I got an email notification of a large transaction. I was like, what the hell? Found out through my email that my wife and I both went to the same gas station at different points in the day. <laughs> Rocket Money caught that. Yeah, they were just like, hey, this might be a scam. What's going on? I was great. I didn't know that. Now I know where my wife gets her gas too. Dude, I get so many uh, notifications from them about large bills, large transactions, new subscriptions. Mm-hmm. It's actually the most useful uh, finance app that I've used. You love it. You you I, love. I emailed Rocket them money. personally and told them that I love this app. <laughs> yeah, Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills, which is great, so that you can grow your savings. Mm-hmm. Rocket Money has over five million users and has saved a total of. Half a billion dollars in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when you're using all of the app's features. Legit. Legit. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash wild times. That's rocketmoney.com slash wild times. Rocketmoney.com slash wild times. times. Sorry, I got excited. I love rocket money. Yeah, you really do. <laughs> Brosner's football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up, whether it's tournament season, the fight for the home playoff court in the NBA. There's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash, or in our case last night for us. We had no knowledge, but we turned it into some cash. <laughs> and did a lot of yelling in your garage. Last night, there was a Atlanta Hawks versus LA Clippers. Forrest was in town, s- s- crashed at my house. We had nothing else to watch. Nope. Cracked a f- few brewskis in the garage, watched the Hawks Clippers game. Nice. And won some cash. Yeah. Sorry. Um, with prize picks, you can now t- win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks, which means turn 10 bucks into a thousand dollars with NBA, NHL, and college basketball Damn, that's entries crazy. today on Prize Picks. Download the app today and use code Wild for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Nice. That, again, download the app, use the code Wild for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It is that easy, and it's fun. Why do you think it's called a Dumbo octopus? I mean, it, it was are those its ears? Because it's because it's got ears. That's what they named it after, right? <laughs> Remember Dumbo, the giant, yeah. oh yeah, the giant flying elephant. Very, with the ears? very depressing story very, that I read to my child. Unbelievably <laughs> depressing. Hit play though. Watch how it uses its ear flaps, whatever you want to call it, to swim like Dumbo. Oh Isn't that wow, cool? yeah, that Isn't is that fun. Cool. Yeah, Weird octopus man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sad story though. The, I was reading that to my kid, and I realized like. Jesus Christ, like all these kids' stories are so sad. Dude, the Disney that we grew up with, it's funny because I put on Disney Plus for my son all the time now. Yeah. And it's all like, we're friends. Let's work together. Hey, hey. You know, like, let's let's be happy. Diversity and love and, you know, like all these things that are great messages. Yeah. Dude, go watch the fucking Lion King or Dumbo or Bambi or some of the shit we grew up with. It's like. The mom or dad always dies or gets taken away, dude. I still cry if I watch Dumbo. I can't watch it. Mom dies immediately. Immediately. Yeah. Oh, God. Terrible. That's why our generation is so fucked up. And these next kids are just like, everything's happy. It's nice. Ah, no. Their generation is way more fucked up than ours. I think. I think the kids below us, everybody listening to this podcast that I'm about to offend, they're the worst. <laughs> Why? And then, the, one, the ones that can't make a phone call and just text? Exactly. Dude, we just had a whole gripe about know, this. That's yeah. why I the it people up. that just cannot cannot make a phone call. They send an email or text, go, I didn't hear back. Dude. Pick up the phone. Just pick up 
the phone. Also, it's such an easy advantage to have to get ahead in life for that generation. To just make phone calls? Just make phone <laughs> calls instead of fucking texting or sending an email. It, I would be shocked if it happened. But this guy's got gusto. No, you know, you know what's interesting, though? I'll, I'll stop making fun of making jokes, making fun. Seriously, I've been coaching this under-18s youth rugby program for 10 years now, yeah. right? Ten, mm-hmm. This is the 10th year we've been doing it. And it's so interesting. When I started doing it, there were a lot of kids who were like rough and tumble, very like trouble forward, you yeah. know, like getting into juvie, drugs, drinking, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Then I, then it the went it through be. At the way we were. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then it went through this, this next generation of like kids that were much softer, but like still played rugby hard. And they, they like were much more selective about the things they were hard about, mm-hmm. but they thought they were grown up. Which was wow, really yeah. interesting. Like yeah. the kids, like basically, I don't know how you want to classify it. Call it three years each, but six years ago, mm-hmm. those kids were like, they were softer, but they thought of themselves as like 25 year olds. They sure. didn't think of themselves as 17 and 18 year olds. This new class of kids that I have now, like which probably on the best teams I've ever coached, they're like the most polite, most respectful, most in line. They're all just a joy to be around. None of them have big attitudes. Nice. Some of them have egos because they're good athletes, but they yeah. don't have like bad attitudes. It's yeah. like something switched again where kids are acting like kids and being nicer. It's, it's really it's interesting. Great. I will say, dude, you know, we were jerks. Like my yes. generation oh, was, God. You, you know, 18, 19, whatever, are, were jerks. Yeah, me too. we were mean to each other. Heinous. We're mean to adults. Yeah. Yep. Didn't, thought adults were morons. Yeah. And I will say, <laughs> like, I see it with my nephew and like my, one of my friends who has a kid that's like 20, whatever. They're like cool. They're very polite. They're yeah. nice. They're engaging. It's they don't really think everything's stupid. Yeah. Do you it's remember they, they do a great job in 21? Uh, no, is it 21 Jump Street? What's the one where Probably. Channing Tatum? Yeah. yeah. Goes yeah. back to high school. Hilarious. And it's all about not caring about anything. Remember yeah. that? That's exactly how high school was for me. <laughs> yeah. If you cared about anything, you were such a loser. Totally. Yeah. And, totally. And that's like just not the case. It's anymore. funny. That is the plot of the movie is he goes back to high school and he acts like he did when he was in high school. Right. But the kids are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, they're <laughs> like, what a weirdo. So I was in uh, yesterday. I took a little puddle jumper, tiny little plane, small, small flight. Your favorite. I love those. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not, uh, not, no anxiety. I take it. Well, uh, the fucking airport is just a room with a vending machine for sodas. So there wasn't even a bar. Uh, oh, boy. So, so I took this little puddle jump over the Rocky Mountains. Beautiful. Low altitude, though. You know, we didn't go up to 30,000 feet. Yeah, we yeah. were like. I don't know how 8, high we were. Probably, yeah. Well, the peaks, a lot of those peaks are like four. So we were probably at 20. Okay. But okay. like maybe only five, 6,000 feet above the peaks. I'm just sure. guessing, right? Sure, sure. Um, but we're just flying over the Rockies for like most of this 50 minute flight. Uh-huh. Right? And you're just seeing just the mountains and the crevasses and where all the snow collects in the valleys. And, and I was just, and it was endless. It's fucking it's endless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then pine forests that go up one slope and it's just such wildly differing terrain. Sounds incredible. And, I, and I, yeah, it was, it was beautiful actually. And I was thinking about like the original mountain men, you know, like yeah. the Jim Bridgers yeah. and the, uh, who's the Coulter. Yeah. Uh, William Coulter. Uh, no, was, I think it was John Coulter. John Coulter. Yeah. Um, uh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Think, John Coulter. Yes, 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 yes. But just thinking about these guys mm-hmm. that would basically get paid you know, like the original mountain men were sort of typically like leading groups of fur trappers mm-hmm. mm. because fancy people on, in New York City and Boston and Philly wanted fur hats. Who doesn't want a coonskin hat? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so I was just thinking about like these guys who were just exploring these mountain ranges that are endless. Yeah, yeah man. And just the shit on your back and what you can shoot with your rifle. And, it, mm-hmm. and it's like a get- one way trip, too, because it's <laughs> yeah. just like we're going in. Yeah. I don't know when we're turning around. I don't know how much fur we'll get. I don't know how much meat we'll get, whatever. And then we'll just turn back out. <clears throat> Trailblazers, yeah. man. Cool. So not to S your D, but you're, you know, you're a good survivalist and a very competent outdoorsman and, and in shape. Would you t- like, would you tackle something like that? Like, do you think you're hard enough to do that? Uh, com- compared- just go one way through the Rockies in the modern world, miles. like in Papua yes. New Guinea, okay, where two- it's never been traveled. Let me. I want to. I want to answer this in two ways. Yes, by modern standards. No, by original by standards. standards. Sure, yeah. sure. Can I do that today? Absolutely. I got my inReach. I got, I got my GPS. I got my Leatherman tools. I, you know, I'm fucking nice tent decked out. <laughs> yeah. Like whatever. If I, there's problem, I send a message. Somebody helicopters me. No problem. 
Um, right. And I'm still, by the way, still considering myself, like, I'm pretty hard. Like, I'll go for a while. Mm. That's a whole different thing to, hey, I'm heading into the Rockies in the dead of winter to look for a moose. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, <laughs> that's a fucking whole different ball game. You like, know, I always think about when I'm driving, I'm, you know, through whatever mountain range going from here to Chicago, you go through, I think it is the Rockies, uh, right? In, it would be. In Colorado. Colorado yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, I just think, like, man, the the people that came through and like dynamited roads through these hillsides and through this that would have been so much fun dude it's crazy <laughs> like how long would it take like even in like topanga or where it's actually really windy and shit smaller roads not like big highways and they they make these these roads and i'm always on them and i'm thinking man like it took so much manpower to create this little road to get like basically nowhere. Yeah. Like up into this hillside where there's a couple houses or something. I, I have a similar thought that I have quite often. Imagine you decide to head west. Okay. Yeah. Like like whatever the new uh what is it, eighteen eighty three or whatever. Yeah imagine, yeah. imagine you decide to head west. Mm -hmm. You go all the way from the east coast and you make it to Palm Springs. And yeah. you're like, fuck it. This is as far as we're going. There's just, there's no coast. There's no ocean. There's nothing over there. Fuck it. We're setting up camp right here in the yeah. desert in Palm Springs. And literally it's like a couple little hills yeah. and there's Eden, like yep. San Diego, Los Angeles Valley, like all perfect. Uh -huh. And you're like, nope, this is it. We're putting down roots. I'm not putting another day on the road. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, an, it's a testament to like persevering through things and, and just get that inch further. Just get that, keep going. Can you imagine though? And then you Somebody comes back like the next wagon year comes by three months later and they're like, we're just going to keep going. You never see him again. And you're like, fucking the idiots. Died. They died. <laughs> He's died in this awful <laughs> desert. Can't yeah. go back. It's too far. There's nothing over those hills. Fuck this place. Yeah. This meanwhile, yeah. they're living in paradise. Yeah. <laughs> this is so painful for me. I, so I texted Kyle to pull something up. I see it on the left side. All he has to do is click it. <laughs> he's 20 and he has no idea how Wikipedia works. Yeah, he's unfamiliar. If it's not chat GPT, he's never used it. <laughs> Listen, um, no, I was yeah. going to ask it, it, just because we've never talked about it on the podcast. Do you know the story of Coulter's run? John, no, about no. John Coulter? no, I know who John Coulter is because of the, the famous trails and everything else. I'd love I, I to don't hear know the story. it. Well, I'm, I'm going to butcher it a little bit. It's okay. Let's but, do it. But it's an interesting thing. To, cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers, cheers to butchering facts. Yeah, yeah bye bye. That's, that's what we for. do here. Somebody fact check us and just put <laughs> it in the comments. Long, <laughs> write long story a, write short. Write a scathing comment about it. <laughs> Coulter was like the super fucking hard guy. Mm -hmm. And so when Lewis and Clark were making their first expedition, yeah. they were recruiting people and they signed Coulter on to be part of the Lewis and Clark expedition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh he was such a fucking badass that they were they, you know they were basically headed back to st louis to present everything they'd found yeah on this big expedition and he like didn't want to go back to the city and they were like all right you're good like we'll cut you loose oh wow Wait, where was this like what part of the world still like in the fucking in the mountains in the somewhere. mountains okay somewhere. Interesting. he's just like fuck it i'm gonna go on i'm, I'm just I'm, he was he was miserable yeah. To go back to St. Louis right, right. and be in a city. Yeah. And so they like, it was very unusual, but they, they respected him so much they cut him loose. But there's this famous thing called Coulter's Run where um, him and another guy after the Lewis and Clark expedition in like 1808, 1809, were, uh, they were just like, doing another exploration and they came, they were kayaking down a river and they came across a group of 1500 Blackfeet, indigenous, oh, wow. indigenous Americans, right? Wow. Uh, Sounds and, dangerous. Yeah. So he gets hit with a fucking arrow in the leg. Coulter does. Wow. His other buddy gets hit, gets pulled ashore, and they hack up the body right in front of Coulter. Jeez. Right? Right. And so then there, but uh, there was like some sort of like black feet, like tradition thing where they would be like, go. And they would sometimes set someone loose. And then have to like hunt And then them? the young black feet warriors wow. would let them get a certain head start and then chase them. And it, was like a rite of passage. Oh to no way! To kill them. Yeah, sounds like a great movie. By Is the that way. how he died, yeah. or he got he they, got away? They actually made a movie out of Coulter's Run. Oh, interesting. So they strip him down naked. So he's butt na buck naked, no shoes. Yeah, and they're like, go, and like, there's like a hundred young warriors that are gonna chase him, waiting. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. and so then they start doing the the war cries, whatever, and then they're after him, and he runs. It's it's an insane amount. Let's see. Uh, how many days did he run for? It's like 11 days. It's something crazy. Yeah. And he, that he's, you know, being chased. How do you think? So then eventually finds a natural feature to hide in. 
and escapes and lives to tell the story. Dude, that is incredible. What, what would you think? Where would you think he hid? He's a, running along a river the whole a time. A bog. Nope. I mean, I want to say a cave, but that's too obvious. No, he's running. He's, he's following a river. So he's on a river completely. What might you find if you're following a river? I, I mean, to hide in? I mean, a dead log? Uh, I don't fucking know. What about a, what about a beaver? A beaver lodge. A, a beaver, beaver den? den? That's yeah. what he goes into? Yeah. Nice, Genius. dude. Hid in, hid in the beaver lodge. They couldn't find him. Waited till, uh, you know, they were gone. And yeah. And got up and still naked. Kept walks going. Out. Yeah. Wow, wow, dude. What a badass. Yeah. It's and that's a cool story. That's crazy, too. That is a cool story. A lot of people don't know this, and it might not be the Blackfoot tribe, but the Native Americans back then were pursuit hunters for the most part. They They'd used run to run around. down deer right. and things like that. So this was, I mean, you know, I don't want to butcher all the facts here, but this was probably something that that tribe was doing as a means to teach them to be better hunters and sure. blah, 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 blah. And they were known for running down animals. That's literally, they'd run down deer. They'd right. run for 10, 12 days to run down a deer. Right, because we, we have the gift of endurance if, right. Right. if our bodies are trained in the right way. Exactly. It's exactly. that perseverance we just talked about. Instead of stopping in Palm Desert, you find John Coulter. And yes. and you and you murder that motherfucker. You don't give up. He's in a beaver dam for Christ's how, sake. How how embarrassed <laughs> how embarrassed were their parents when they all came back? Oh, they probably oh killed and him. They're like, there was a hundred of you, and he was naked. <laughs> yeah, and shoeless. <laughs> like they, you're you're out. You're you're your yeah. own tribe now. Get out of here. But how terrifying, man! If you were in his oh my non shoes, it would be, dude. I mean, could you? It, Nobody could. Nobody in today's world could survive that. Not one single person. No way. No, uh -uh. that's insane. But that'd be kind of funny if it was like, like Usain Bolt, and they're yeah, like, "Here's your head start," and then he's just like, <laughs> "Don't be like, oh, yeah. fuck, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> we should have killed that guy yeah. and made his friend run instead of going the other way around." Uh, oh, good times. That would man. be that'd be a good reality show. I mean, you could never make it, but a good like competition show. Yeah, but yeah. not like hunted. Kill yeah, but you like, know, like but send the you, guy out there. Maybe you just do it like they got to get the, the shit flags, the flags on them. They don't actually flags. Kill. No, come on, Peter. You're so not. This a producer. is for network television. No, you got to have like bows and arrows with like the paint, you know, like paint exploding tips and uh, sure. spears that like poof colored yeah. powder. And why? Why aren't you creating the show? I'm creating it right now. You yeah. both create shows. We're doing Live it right now. Live on air. All right. You I have love ten, it. 10 people from 10 different backgrounds of hunting, fishing, tracking, military, yeah. and then one badass survivalist. We like, can do it all. Do it all. Who, who ex-special like forces. Like EJ from uh, yeah. Survivor, no? Got, EJ, EJ, EJ from Naked and Afraid weighs oh, about 340 afraid. pounds. He's not outrunning anybody. <laughs> not um, after he did the show, he didn't. He no, lost about 100 true. pounds. But no, you need somebody younger, fitter, like, dude, who you, would be you, your get, guy? you get fucking, uh, what's his name? The guy on Rogan, the, the always suffer guy. Um, oh, uh, David... Uh, no, uh, Goggins. David Goggins. David, David Goggins. Goggins. Yeah. Ex special forces never slows down. Give him a call. Blow a call in. Strip Goggins down to the buff and just be like, <laughs> get him. Yeah, that'd be fucking sick. Dude, that's By the a way, show. You give, yeah, you give like 10 people, they have like a little paintball, like a paint bow and arrow. Yeah. yeah they can be pick a ball. their you weapon. Give Goggins one. Yeah. And he, or you, I'd say give him like 30 people. Yeah. Bring and it he on. gets a head start yep. into the forest. It's a 45 minute head start. Yeah. That's it. And just pick off whoever you can. It's it's yep. a bit like uh, American Gladiators, except I'd, I'd call it Hunted. Better, that's yeah. What I call it. That's, I call that's, it Hunted. That's clever. It's a good show. <laughs> yeah, let's make it. Let's yeah, it's I, 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 a pity I, nobody makes television anymore. I desperately want to watch it. Have I really do. Could yeah. you imagine? Just oh, it'd be so. Good. And, and oh all God, the and yes. all the ten or thirty hunters are like from different backgrounds, and they have different specialties. They yep. can pick their different weapons. One has a a fake rifle, one has a fake, you know, bow and arrow, one has right. a machete or hatchets or whatever. Yeah. Go get them. It's literally American Gladiator, but better. Guys, after years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by overpriced wireless providers, if we've learned anything, there's always a catch. So when I heard that Mint Mobile wireless plans are 15 bucks a month when you purchase a three-month plan, I thought, what's the catch? But there's none. No, it's because they sell the service online. They don't have to pay for retail stores and you get the savings. We've all switched and it works great. The coverage is great. 
Forrest, what are you doing over there? He's got a line. I'm on the same phone. It just works now. (laughs) I just switched my plan. You guys keep doing your thing. Leave me alone. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash wild times. That's mintmobile.com slash wild times and cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash wild times. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. That was great. Hey guys, if you like the show, I got good news for you. You can get a whole lot more. We do four bonus podcasts every month. That's one a week. That's 48 a year. That's right. Go to wildtimes.club slash info. Uh, You can subscribe on Patreon. You can subscribe on Spotify. Do it on Spotify if that's where you listen. Why would you do that? What's the benefit? Um, You could also listen to all of the podcasts ad free. Ad free. Huge. You know, that's how we got this cool studio. We love you guys. Thank you. We love you. Just do it. Do it now. Do it now. Do it Please. Now. Please. What I had a great uh, wildlife sighting. Just did not, nothing super rare, but a very cool moment a couple days ago. Tell mm-hmm. us. I was in Colorado and uh, we're cruising down this little like two track, real rough road. And the guy who's driving was like, oh, two bald eagles right there. So there was like two bald eagles doing some oh, wow. circling. It didn't look like they were checking each other out it was like yeah, they were looking riding at something. thermals or something yeah. yeah and then just all of a sudden we see a fucking mule deer not with its herd just fucking cruising oh cool being tr- 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 uh you know followed by three coyotes oh no way yeah. oh that's sick that's so awesome the mule deer obviously got like got separated from its herd or yeah something, spooked I guess. yeah but mm-hmm. it was it was really cool it was like we would stop to look at these eagles and then we just that's awesome saw this mule deer i love that cruising. i i had a uh pretty intense Sighting. It made me a little sad the other day. I was bringing my kid into my uh, in-laws' house, and there on the driveway was, you know, just a big old bumblebee, not completely dead, but just still alive, you know, but gonna die. And I went through this dilemma in my head: Do I put him out of his misery? He's at he's at the size for me where like it's actually difficult for me to like step on and kill. I like wouldn't want yeah, to do you, it. You know what you got to do? So first of all, if he was definitely going to die, you should. He was. I mean it's a bug. It doesn't really have the same pain uh, come receptors, on, though. but I still. Know. Here's what if you don't have one of these, get yourself one, both of you. Okay. Not a sponsor. Bug assault. The salt spray thing? Oh my god, salt it's gun? such a treat. Yeah, I got you, one for Christmas. You did love I this mention thing. this? Yeah, yeah, you did. It's the best thing. It's the best toy I've ever got. Wait, wait, is this the it's it's a spray? It's a shotgun that shoots salt. Oh yeah, I it's remember a spring-loaded shotgun. Dude, they're I, I like, I'm like sitting around in the house. If I've got nothing to do, I'm like, where's a fly? Where's a fly? Where's a fly? <laughs> Flies are a different story, but I, I feel like that would make m- my bumblebee friend suffer if no. I just. So here's why I would say you don't smash the, the bumblebee. Okay. But I will kill the black widow. Sure. If, okay. Yeah, if you want. But my thought is maybe the bumblebee got wet. Okay. Yeah. Ch- you have to be it's sure. Possible. It's possible. It's been raining. has a chance to dry out. Sure. And because they don't really have. Technically, they don't have brains. I don't know that it's actually sitting there being like, oh, I wish I, I miss my mommy. You know, like, I don't know that it's suffering. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a Disney movie, Bumblebee, whose mother <laughs> died in a tragic I, I could hunting be wrong, accident. But I feel like the chance that it might just dry out and then fly away. And so leave it. So we got one for gut. kill. No, no. We got one for leave. I, 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 to be fair, I said you kill it if it looks like it's really suffering and you're sure. Not it looked like it was suffering. like there's a cordyceps was... growing out of its face. That's <laughs> yeah, when you yeah, kill it. Yeah. yeah All right. Yeah. What if I told you this? I want to go back into some news here. What All if right. I told you this? Let's hear it. What if I told you this is the headline? A dragon stalled development of 310,000 homes <laughs> in Australia. So like, are you basically saying that somehow they were going to build 300,000 homes mm-hmm. and because of a dragon, they, they can't. That's exactly what I'm saying. Is this true? This is true. Nah, get out of it. What, what are you talking explain about? Explain yourself. Yeah. Shh, I'm just going to leave it at that. No, you can't right, explain it. Look it up. All right, so a pause button has been hit on a future development of up to 300,000 homes after the discovery of, and we talked about this on the pod, the Victorian grassland earless dragon. Oh, yeah. Now, you might remember this was thought to be extinct for over 50 years in yep. Victoria, Australia, and then they found one and then I think two and they created a breeding program at the Melbourne Zoo. Mm-hmm. And since then, it's been going really well. I think they're up to like 20, 30-ish individuals. Um, and uh, But because of the discovery of where they found this Melbourne earless dragon, Kyle, pull it up. It's not the big fire-breathing dragon that we're thinking of. <laughs> it's just this really cute little lizard. And oh also, Australians God, call like every cute? lizard a dragon. Right. Um, so they're, so it's, it's prevented them from building because well, these are yeah. endangered? Well, because where they found it was right. where they want to develop this this 
you know, community or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, you need to preserve that habitat. The reason the Victoria uh, dragon was driven to extinction was lack of habitat in that grassland habitat. Yeah. And think about being a developer. Like, you don't want to develop in a bog. You don't want to develop in a river. You know, you don't want to develop on a mountain. Right. You want to develop in a grassland. Nice and yep. flat, grassy, great place to develop. So, yeah, the rediscovery in this urban area has halted this. Uh, I love, so this, this is, I love this. This is outside of Melbourne, Australia, right? Yep. Right. So it's, it's, I think it's the second biggest city in Australia. And just, it's, it's urban sprawl. Yeah. Right. It so is. it's just, we just keep building and bu yep. 300,000 homes. <laughs> That's big. That's a lot. That's a lot of homes. Yeah. But this well, is cool. Like it's an example of people being like, yeah, it might just be this little lizard. Right. But yes. We thought it was extinct. It's not. Mm -hmm. Should we actually just go through and just fully wipe this thing out and right. make it extinct. And the answer is no, of course. Right. Yeah. Well, so we it's kind of cool that they were actually able to stop that development because that's 200 plus thousand jobs. Yo, dude, and, and so many, I mean, just so much uh, boost for the economy, but we should, I want to yeah, come back just, to this story all, all later. All it is is fix the problem. So set up a nice, gra like, you know, earless dragon reserve, yeah. make some boardwalks through it or something, and people can go there and support it and make a donation and make that habitat and then just fucking move the development. I know that's easier said than done. Right. Yeah. Just move it to another area, right? Just move it outside of that or make it surrounding that or whatever right. and have both the best of both worlds. Like there's definitely other pieces of habitat. Sure, maybe it's another 40 minute drive or whatever, but there's definitely other pieces of habitat that are less critical to some species survival. I mean, sure. if you think about, I, I hate like, I'm not like a city guy where I love being like in downtown LA surrounded by skyscrapers. Sure. But the more housing that we can build up into the sky, the better, the better. Yeah. So instead of 300,000 single family homes, you could have, you know, a thousand apartment buildings. Have you guys seen some of these cities that they're building? Like in it's mostly in, in China. Japan. No, mostly in uh, like Dubai and UAE and stuff like that. Cal, yeah. Pull up, pull up the uh, like there's the wall city. There's the floating city. Oh, yeah. There's a couple of those. Yeah. So there's this city. So this is that wall city. Then there's this big dome city that they're building. Then there's a floating city. Like, type in, Kyle, I'm trying to think, like, 10 new cities that are being built, like mega cities being built. Um, it's crazy that they're just you just build a city. Dude, the amount of money that they, well, like, so, spend. So what's, what's the wall yeah, city, for example? Like Click that, that one. They just that built a giant, a giant wall, and it, it has yeah, So it's this giant, it? reflective, like, 100-mile-long super city. Okay. Um. It's 100 miles long and I think 500 it's long. Yeah. feet high. Yeah, that's it. So it's just this giant wall. Wow. And it's the middle of the desert, and so they've made it all reflective. Yeah. Yeah, there it is right there. That's it. That's this real. Is, that's and, under construction, by the way. And so the that's whole crazy. city will be inside the wall? Correct, between the two walls. And they're harvesting all of that sun energy and blah, blah, blah to power it. And yeah. it's just crazy, dude. There's, there's a ship one. If you, scroll down, Kyle. See if the ship one's there. Um, I don't know what that one is. That's in Tokyo. Uh, these look wild, dude. Some of these look made up, but there's some crazy things coming. Pull, pull up the floating city that they're building. You know, I love this, though, because this is the way of the future, I think, you know, when as our resources start dwindling w w across the globe. Like, using the... It sounds like that wall city is using solar power to basically run the whole thing. Oh, they're all, like, self-sustaining. That's the whole point of it. Yeah, that's not the one I was thinking of. They're, they're building a city on a boat that can house, like, two million people. It's, it's like crazy. the size of a small. Yeah, it's that that thing, that thing, the 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 turtle thing. Be Look a at this fun thing. Cruise. That's a city, I, like I a huge they, city. It's absolutely, just in the shape of a sea turtle. Oh yeah, like full on. So Look this, at this this, this is inside of this ship. Yeah, this I'm confused about because this ship actually looks. Does it just float on the water, or does it actually no, take it people? It moves places? around the world. Well, that can't be good for the environment. I think it's all solar power. Really? I think so. If that's true, that's Look what this. all There's cruise ships should There's cars and do. like parks and do you want to live in that city nah I, it just feels like a cruise ship to me yeah you, it does you, you would just, always feel yeah you would always feel still separated from the rest of the world yeah but <sighs> what's the difference between that and living in perth australia i don't know i've never been there well perth australia is one of my favorite cities in the world but it's like a zillion miles from anything it's ocean on one side and vast <laughs> desert outback on every other side so forrest are you uh you got a trip coming yeah leaving uh leaving in four days Going to Japan for three weeks. Vacation? No, I wish. I don't think I know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I did go skiing for a day with my son, which was also the opposite of a vacation. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, heading to Japan. Um, it's, uh, you know, for a very special program that happens once a year during the summer. Oh. Hmm. Very okay. special week. I don't know. I mean, you know, on, on a major network. I, sure. Don't know what it is. Yeah, never well, heard of it. Very cryptic. Yeah, can't talk about it. So, um, what are you going to be diving with some 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 sharks? Or yeah, something? if there was like a week dedicated to this kind of programming, the yeah. type of animal we'd be studying would be sharks. They'd probably okay. name yeah. it after that. I don't know. It's just a thought. But yeah, no. So had, <laughs> I'm going to get so sued. Um, you didn't say to, anything, mate. I don't know what you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. No one does. No, heading to Japan. Um, a lot of people don't know this. Japan has the highest level of endemism of sharks in the world. Peter, you've been doing this podcast for four years. What does endemism mean? I was just going to say, I have no... No, come on. No. We've, I've used that I, word. I'm thinking it means endemic of some type. Like Which they, means what? They, are, they, are, are, they belong there naturally. Oh, Only there. So, so close. He was, yeah. I'm going to give you a prop. I did not know that about you. I got a little bit of a bone. Yeah, so, so very unusual, but the way that the currents work in Japan, and specifically around Tokyo in... Um, a Suruga Bay, which is that big bay that oh. Tog- Tokyo sits on, they've got more species of unique shark than anywhere else on the planet. So, oh, spe- wow. endemic meaning species that only occur there and nowhere else. Gotcha. And so, yeah, we're heading there to look at some of these very weird and unusual shark species and go and, you know, Super try cool. and find some and film them and do a lot of really cold diving. Water's going to be in the uh, low 40s. So, what, what wow, kind of wetsuit are we talking for that? Everybody recommend a dry, recommended a dry suit, but I hate dry suit diving. Very you can't, difficult. Can't free dive. It's unwieldy. You're not as mobile. So we're going with our seven mil wetsuits. I think it's going to suck. What's a, what now? A dry suit <laughs> is what? Like the astronaut, big, huge, bulky version? No, a dry suits. Uh, no, no, wets or yeah, yeah. Sorry, you've dry seen suit. dry suits because you worked on whale wars and they wear dry suits. Yeah. Well, what's the difference between a dry suit and a wetsuit? There, you're seeing pictures right there. So the dry suits like it seals at the wrists and ankles, and you have air surrounding oh, okay. your body so that it keeps you dry because what makes you cold is the water on your skin which is pulling heat out of your body gotcha so a wetsuit just gives you a rubber layer with a thin amount of water you know with limited water movement in and out of your suit yeah a dry I mean, suit keeps you totally dry people wear short jeans and a t-shirt under their dry suit that's wild yeah do you, dude uh i don't think people really understand how cold 40 degree water is no i mean like even if you said like 60 degree water that's cold as shit if you jump in it you know oh, and if you're I've, in it for a while yeah, yeah for i've sure. been cold plunging not every day i'd love to say every day but a lot trying to prep for this yeah. now, i think we've talked about this before it just doesn't matter how much you do it you don't get used you to never want to hop in you don't get excited about it so are you setting it at this water temperature no i don't so the gym that has the cold plunge i don't go to anymore so i've been just cold plunging in the creek by my house because we've had oh, such yeah. a wet year yeah. and the water is about 52 53 a lot warmer than 40 it's a lot warmer than 40 but i spend five minutes in it with nothing just board shorts on yeah but i i said i was gonna do it every day i've realistically done it about two to three times a week it's still pretty good it fucking sucks dude it sucks yeah. so so uh that versus actually hopping into this 40 degree water with a wetsuit is that like comparable to the jumping into this creek at 52 no it's shorts? just different it's just like it's just like people that live in fucking minnesota right like if you go to minnesota right now it's probably 22 degrees and there's guys walking around in shorts you know what <laughs> right. i mean because they live there they're 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 callous to it yeah that's all i'm trying to do like it's not like okay i've been cold plunging it's similar it feels the same i'm just trying to build up some tolerance right right because i i'm i'm the opposite of that. i'm from africa and live in southern california i've never fucking i you hate like the cold, the cold. Right. no i hate yeah. the cold so i'm just trying to get a little bit more acclimatized but the difference it's probably worse being in that it's definitely more shocking being in the creek at 59 degrees in board shorts than it is jumping in in a wetsuit. Mm-hmm. But we're going to be in the water six, seven hours a day. So that, so five that minutes. cold will seep through. And it just doesn't go away. Relentless. Like we did that, the Jaws of Alaska show that yeah. Patrick and I did together. I was cold for two weeks. There was no, like, you get into bed at night and you put all your sweatshirts on, you drink hot chocolate, whiskey, whatever. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I'm warm enough to like go back to sleep. But then you're just back in the water at dawn the next day. And it's like, you just, your bones feel cold. That's crazy. I never really thought about like, you know, the fact that you stay cold for days and weeks after going in there, man. It's yeah, your bones. It feels like your bones are cold, dude. Imagine being like an an Inuit or an an Eskimo or whatever, where they, they survive one of those winters in the Arctic. Yeah. Like there's no way they were ever like, ah, 
that toasty. <laughs> oh, right. You know what I mean? There's just no way they were ever just like, cold. ah, it feels good today. Nice and sunny out. Right. Like they're just cold for three months. Yeah, it's, yeah. Br- it's brutal. It really is. I mean, I think, I think y- you, we say you never get used to it. I do think that they probably got used to it after like five years, but still. I don't know, brute, man. Brute. Hey, Pat, I wanted to ask you a question. You said you took a little, uh, you, you took a little pond hopper. Right, a puddle, 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 pond puddle hopper. jumper. P- pond I like pond, pond hoppers just as good. Yeah, it's pond hopper. You're killing Kyle over there with. It's pond a pond hopper. hopper. So yeah. what? What? What went on? Like, what's going on? This sounds like pr- a pretty adventurous oh, okay. little kind of trip well, you were it's, doing. It's just something I'm filming in in uh, southern Colorado. Oh, okay, in the mountains there. So it was Anything up there just on a scout. But exciting happened there, or that's it's beautiful. It's just you know, yeah, beautiful. Like you know, base camps at like nine thousand feet. Um, we oh, go wow. up to like maybe 10,005 and it's crazy. The difference between 9,000 and 10, five yeah. <laughs> breathing versus not breathing. Yeah. It's crazy that yeah. that 50, that I, we can go from sea level to 8,500, 9,000 and you feel it. Yeah. yeah. But like once you get up to 10, five, it's like untenable. Oh dude. When yeah. I did that Nepal trip, I couldn't go up a flight of stairs like 100%. without huffing and puffing. I was like, oh. <sighs> Just so from like brutal. literally, I mean, uh, yeah. like like the height of this room, and I would be like completely winded, hundred yeah. percent. And the, and the difference between everything? the first day, so your first day is is legit like that, where yeah. you're just like miserable. Every three steps, you're like you like hear your heart beating in your yeah. ears oh. and shit. Yeah. And then second day is exponentially better, and then it it gets incrementally better from there. Yeah. How the, uh, how are the new boots, by the way? Oh, dude! <laughs> they you got are new boots. Fucking amazing! Not not a sponsor, but no. <laughs> Merrill, yeah. remember yeah. I sent him on the pod. He's like, I really need new boots. I was yeah. shopping. I was like, I'll get you some boots, dude. They are the most comfortable thing I've ever had on my foot. I wore nice. them on the flight home. Oh, great! Oh, wow. Just because they were they're so much more comfortable than my sneakers. That's amazing. I I told you, dude. I love Merrill boots. I'm a huge huge proponent. Not a sponsor. No, I'm just a big fan. Dude, yeah. they're and by the way, they look fucking sweet and nice. they look got a bunch of compliments. They're kind of like the the like military style boot. Yeah. Oh, nice. They look like that, but they're made with whatever <laughs> modern technology. <laughs> they're they're, they're made out of pillow. So they're yeah. <laughs> crazy. I think you gave me a, a pair of Merrells and they're like, dude, I've never had a good pair of hiking shoots. Yeah. Shoes. Shoots. I've shoots. never had a good hiking shoot. <laughs> yeah, never a good hiking shoe. But uh dude, I wear them every time I go hiking. It's the difference between basically walking uh, in my bare feet and walking with any yeah. type of shoe on. Like, the fe- like I don't slide down yeah. fucking things anymore. It's like, I can't believe I was not wearing hiking shoes when I was fucking hiking. This is, it is a yeah. must. This is going to come across like we're trying to do an ad nah, for Don't them, get Merrill's. No, get I'm just telling everybody, like, it's good, just good tip. Like, I went through a lot of different types of hiking boot and then finally settled on that, that brand. And it's, it's been a game yeah, changer. I was, I, I was a Loa guy. Yeah. People, yeah. people are, these are outdoorsy people exactly. that listen to this podcast. This is, for sure. We're not, we're not yeah. promoting these, but I was a Loa guy yep. because they were so, when I became really loyal to Loa was when I was with BTG in Alaska mm-hmm. and we were just walking through puddles and rain. Good for, ankle support for too. a month. Good ankle support, but everyone else's boot eventually would soak through. Yeah. And the Loas were always like still dry. Bone That's dry. nice. Yeah. But now, dude, with this new pair of Merrells, I'm like, this might be the only <laughs> fucking shoe I wear. <laughs> so Glad thank you, thank you. It saved me, saved me a couple hundred bucks. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. There's I'm nothing worse than a fucking wet foot, dude. Oh god. And it's if you don't brutal. have boot dryers and your boots get soaked through, and then you're putting oh, on my wet god, boots every dude. day. Ugh. Oh, that's worse than doing a cold dip. <laughs> well, especially when you're filming, dude, and you and you make that mistake and you step in something too deep and you swamp your boot Ugh. one hour into a 13 hour oh, day of trekking. Oh There's nothing God. you can do. It sucks. Yeah. So like, bad. Ho- my day is going to be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all about the tools, man. It's what separates <laughs> us from the animals. I always say. So the other day, Pat, while you were on your your adventure. Pat, uh, Peter and I did a bonus pod, uh-huh. and yeah. Edwin came up with a game that I thought sounded incredibly stupid. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was called Dinosaur or Muscle, and I was like, listen, listen, I know a triceratops versus a bicep when I see one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not that easy. So what about so, the tricep? <laughs> so Kyle, how does this work? So basically, there's a handful of words here that are very cryptic looking and sounding, um, and I'm going to say the word, and you guys are just going to guess, is that a dinosaur or a muscle? Go for it. And then Kyle's going to pull up a picture. He's not going to tell okay. us. We're going to just get to the photo, which okay. makes it more fun. Yep. And I think when he does that, we'll know. I, I would will. hope so. Yeah. Whether we're seeing a dinosaur <laughs> yes. or a human muscle. <laughs> that is correct. All right. This is the first one. 
Props to Edwin. Also, also, and fun of this is listening to Kyle try and pronounce these. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> these are tough. All right. Sartorisis. Sartorisis. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll read these. No, no, no. We got to let him. He's a fucking moron. <laughs> read it at the end. Sartorius. 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 This one is, you added yo, four extra T's. I did. Yeah. By the, nine sorry. syllables. Go ahead. Is that a dinosaur uh, or a muscle? Wait, we got a guess. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go. Horse dying. That's absolutely a dinosaur. Sartorius is a, is a dinosaur. I know this one is uh, a you? muscle. Yeah. So part of the fun is guessing what it is. So I'm going to say that the Sartorius is a small, ground-dwelling, large-plated dinosaur. I'm going to say it's a muscle in a human body, but I don't know what it does. I'm ah. Oh, it's a big muscle, too. Oof. It looks... Okay. It's strapping. like the one I kept guessing the other day, yeah. Peter. It's the it, thing it, that connects your grundle to your knee. <laughs> yeah. I kept saying that. It does. It literally connects your grundle to knee. Yeah. yeah. Is, is there something that goes? That's through? it. It's the sartorius. It's the grundle to knee muscle. That's, it's All a right. fact. Yep. So now right. when I get hit in the grundle, instead of saying that, I'm going to be like, oh, I hit the top of my sartorius. That's it. Three yeah. syllables, brute. You can never say that in conversation. <laughs> there All right. right. One point for Patrick. Yes. Boo. All right. Next up. Plat platisma platisma this Plat bothers me i told me. you it's this funny is funny i didn't <laughs> know he was dyslexic <laughs> yeah um platisma. Uh, all right you go i'll go first this time okay. okay platisma is a muscle in the human body that connects <laughs> yeah there we go now that you're connects it. your this foot bone that if it gets stepped on hurts to your big toe Smart. ah i like that Smart. okay all right um i'm gonna say platisma is it's definitely the thing that allows you to wiggle your ears fact well, I'll tell you guys, you're both wrong. This is a giant dinosaur that lives in Barth Pond in Downers Grove, Illinois. Okay. <laughs> Barth Pond. Very specific. Very. Oh, oh, boom. Neck muscle. It's your neck. It connects That's your neck to your That's a dinosaur. Interesting. It's <laughs> another a massive muscle. Too. It's a huge muscle. It goes all the way from your collarbone up into your cheek and around your it, chin it's it's it reminds me of the flank steak on a cow <laughs> it, that's it, what it, it looks like looks it delicious does. yeah it's a flank steak if okay. we, either of you guys die when we're stranded in the mountains i'm going straight for the platysma. yeah <laughs> it's a nice nice bit of grilled platysma oh, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, i heard tacos. it's tough Ooh. oh god platysma tacos cut bro. it up nice yeah <laughs> all, right. all right this Look. pisses me off because i have to go dinosaur again on the next one no matter what it is why that's because i've gone just I, it's okay. really pissing me off. Right. Patrick Edwin. with two, Forrest one, Peter zero. Okay, okay. I can't wait for you to pronounce this yeah. one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> just think of that. Unenlagia. Unenlagia. When you edit this, Kyle, put put the word spelling up so people can see how dumb you okay. are. It's it's really funny <laughs> because because Edwin was like smart enough to actually put. The way it sounds. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to read the phonetic, and it's messing me up. I think I should just read the word. You Kyle, what's your first language? <laughs> <laughs> it is? It is. Holy shit. Unenlegia. <laughs> there it is. Unenlegia. You got it. Unenlegia. All right, Forrest, after you stop choking. <laughs> what Forrest is this? loves Have this Have a secure fat tire, pal. Yeah. Like, throw it out. Dude, I've had this cough for like six weeks. It oh, will not go welcome away. Welcome to my world, baby. All right, what do you got? <laughs> Muscle or dinosaur? Somebody uh, who right. isn't I'll coughing jump up in. a long uh, ago. Unen, Unen Legia is a dinosaur, and it's cute as hell. It almost looks like a, tur a tortoise, but without a long neck. There you go. Yeah, this is a this is a dinosaur. I know because the last two were muscles, and this one, uh, <laughs> the Unen Legia, is a dinosaur that lives off the coast of Santa Barbara and eats sea lions for breakfast. There you go. Unenlegia is the sphincter retraction muscle. Okay. Oh, wow. Ooh. I swear to God, if this is a muscle. Damn oh, it. it's a dinosaur. Little feathered dino. He's wow. cool, too. That's a cool looking dinosaur. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a, it looks a bit like a velociraptor, but more birdish. Yeah, yep. like a bit like an ostrich up there in that one uh, rendering of it. I like I wish, how one picture here. he's got tiny little chicken wings, and the other he's got like massive. Why, why can't we still have this? I don't know. It's awesome. It's a dragon. It's a, it's a that's, cute dragon. That's, that's dragon. a legit dragon. That's the one that would actually stop 300,000 homes from me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. What do we got next? Yeah. All right. Next. Uh, we I'm, have... I'm crushing him three points. I've got one. Yep. Three for, three for, three for Pat. Wait, wait Peter's till you hear one. this. Forrest has one. two. Two. One. I don't know. I think, I think He's one. got one. All right. Next up. Longis, Longisimus. Eh, not bad. Pretty it's close. not great. It's it's not good. Longissimus. Longissimus. 
All right, I'll go first on this one. Um, this is a small. Oops. This is a small Argentinian serpent-like dinosaur. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, I, I'll take a. I'll take a whack at this. This is. A, <laughs> this is the muscle that connects the blood-filling tubes in a penis. Oh. To the anus rectum area. Oh, I don't think you need that. <laughs> no, um, like, you know, when you squeeze your butthole? I don't together, do that very much. You, you flex it, so, like, it, it tightens Why? up. Why? Are you Let's, doing it right now? Well, <laughs> I mean, I do it pretty regularly, like, um, when I drop the soap. I believe I know this is a muscle. Uh, I think what it does is uh, it's, like, the thing in your ear that flutters when you get it. Oh. oh that I hate sound, that thing. That yeah. sounds familiar. I think you might be right. Let's see. Longissimus. Longissimusia. It is a muscle. It's a muscle. Down down the spinal cord. But on the inside on the like tummy side? No. On the outside. No, no, it's on the back, but yeah, it looks it runs like runs along it's your back strap. It's the equivalent yeah. of a back strap. Back strap. Yeah. Okay. All right. Also looks fairly tasty. Learn. Yeah, yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> Dude, anytime they have a rendering where it's a nice red. Long right? Muscle. Like steak colored. Yeah. You're like, come on. <laughs> no, make it another color. Yeah. All right, I'm All right. definitely losing yep. now. Patrick's crushing. Now we have the corrugator. Ah, so this feels like a trick. This yeah. feels like an Edwin trick, right? It's like yeah. a piece of tin. I love like something it. that goes on your roof. <laughs> right. Edwin didn't Edwin didn't find it necessary to even put the pronunciation. Nah. He's like, yeah, Kyle will be able to say corrugator. And really know. this is a gator, as we can tell in the word. So this <laughs> is definitely a dinosaur. It might even still be around in gator form. Lives in swamps in Florida, obviously. This should be a muscle, but I think he's tricking us. I think it's a dinosaur that is, uh, it's a silly one. It's like, it looks almost like a dodo bird type thing. Um, three for dinosaur. Three for dino. Corrugator. Damn it. It's we muscle. suck. It's oh, your okay. eyebrows. It's your eyebrows. eyebrows. Huh. Hey, I'm learning a lot. Like, right? actually, this is pretty fun. I told yeah. you. It's pretty good. We played it the other day. It's really hard, too. That's a tasty looking face, though. Do you, you remember when Jim Carrey would do the thing where he would, like, have a, each eyebrow individually And then yes. jump up and down? Yeah. <laughs> Those are the core. He's got strong core. You're right. Yeah. That is what that is. Yep. yep. Cool. Wow. All right. Next. Next. Here we go. Uh, Anconius. 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 So this is the same. Uh, it, it sounds very similar to carnitas, which is a form of taco. <laughs> yep, so I'm assuming <laughs> that this is an edible dinosaur of some type. Anconius is absolutely a dinosaur. Um, <laughs> it would go on the water and the land. There you go. And it, in neither place did it look like it belonged. I know this one fact. Anconius is the dad muscle. Are you familiar with the dad muscle? No, what's no. that? This little, this little alien that you get right here. Oh, yeah. oh. It only comes in the day your child is born. <laughs> you were, oh, you actually did know it. No, I was guessing. Holy shit. No. I swear to God, I was guessing. Holy that. When shit. I said I know this fact, I just want to make a joke about the dad muscle. Okay. Here's, that here's, is crazy. Here's, uh, that's a lie. You knew this and because you're proud of your Anconius, because I you have a pretty defined Anconius. I, I do Anconius. have pretty good dad muscles. It's because I broke this arm. But um, <laughs> That's that muscle, isn't it? I think yeah. it is. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Dude, I'm gonna, I, I gotta work on my fucking Forrest Anconius, isn't usually dude. a liar like you are, Pat. No, so. I swear to God, I didn't know that. I just wanted to point this out. That's wild, dude. I, I would dude. be pointing that out constantly yeah, if I had that Anconius. Oh, uh, that's a nice looking Anconius. Fuck Let me yeah. see yours, Peter. I, I can't even see. No, nah, go, 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 go to curl. Go to curl. I swear to God, as soon look, you got a good one. This it's this little alien that sticks up above the elbow right there. Oh my God! I don't even have one. It's kind of turning me on. How do I even use my arm? Look at that thing. (laughs) All right, nice juicy. Mm. Next, (laughs) next. Yeah, I'm also eating your Anconius. (laughs) (laughs) That's dying, gentlemen. All right, right, Kyle. Next, try try hard. Multifidus. Multifidus. I think you got it. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, multifidus. That's how I'd pronounce it. It's a disease. Multifidus. That's a disease. Multifidus is definitely a dino. It's a dino. It's got to be a dino. Yeah, three for dino. Small, feathered, relatively un like boring. Multifidus. Fuck damn it, dude. Edwin, come on. It's another back strap. How many back straps do we have? This is is like a lower back that it flanks out from your spine in like a feathered to your pattern to your pelvis bro i just gotta pause. what important you don't want to strain that how uh-huh. fucking wild that that every human has this construction 
And we don't talk about it. I feel like it's, it's something that we don't talk about. It's, it's insane. We just piece together but, with but all also, these things. Like, yes. Whoever discovered these, like they went with these like weird Latin names, like name them something funny. Right. What right. would be a good name butt for muscle. this? Yeah. That's the butt muscle. This is your flip, flippy flap. <laughs> <laughs> this is your butt nuffidus. <laughs> butt nuffidus. Uh, all right. Two, three more. Three what more. do we got, Kyle? Hesperonis. Very good, Hesperonis. Kyle. Hesperonis. You nailed that one. I had to warm up. Here you go. He was doing it over there. He muted himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hesperonis. Uh, it's. Uh, I'm just gonna say dinosaur because I've said I've been wrong. I think every single I, time except for the dad muscle. I think uh, Edwin has used ChatGPT to do a psychological profile on us to figure out like how, how to fool us. It's working the best. Yeah, because I mean, okay, I, 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 it can't be a muscle. It it has to be a dinosaur. But I'm annoyed that it's gonna be a muscle. It's gonna be a muscle. <laughs> the, I, I said dinosaur. I'm gonna go muscle because it's the word Hesperonis is making me think of pepperoni. <laughs> And so I think it Scientific. might be a muscle in the male penis. There we go. Nice. Pepperoni dick. Pep yeah. Kyle's crying with oh laughter. Go ahead, Kyle. Penis -roni. What is the Hesperornis? <laughs> Hesperornis. Ah, right. It's an aquatic. That's oh, right. Oh, the bird. That was. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's like a birdosaur. It's, it's a, bird a swimming sore. bird. They're huge. They're on prehistoric planet. I, oh, probably, nice. Yeah, my son loves that. Yeah. Wait, how big is a Hesperornis? They're huge. Go to that. Yeah, look there next to the human. Oh, so it's like. It's like Four feet tall. Yeah. Cool looking animal. Yeah. It's like a corn, like a old school cormorant. We need these. Yeah. I know. These Why back. don't we have this? I mean, I this know. should definitely still I wonder exist. if the cormorant is, is closely related to this. It does look just like a cormorant. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. All you right. Look so that it's up not quickly, a penis very muscle. Quickly. Just look up if the Hesperonis uh, cormorant's a descendant of it. His spelling's not great either. It's okay. Google fixes that. That's why he doesn't <laughs> really know how to spell. Corman like? Yeah, Corm no. Yeah, genus but they're pro Corman like? So yeah. it's not actually in not the related, genus. Though. Yeah, mm. but looks like it. Interesting. Even it's, it's even recognized in Wikipedia that it's Corman-like. Yeah. All right. All cool. right. Sweet. Two more. On. Two more. Right. I've learned What's about new dinosaurs. I've learned about muscles. He yeah. will never be able score. to pronounce this one. No. What's this the score? Is, it's, the score is uh, pats up by a lot. All right. Yeah. Well, this one... The, the final one Brish. will be worth 200 points. So it doesn't okay. matter. That's what he did to me last time, and then he won. <laughs> yeah. I love that you always agree to that, though. I know. It's, I, I've, I'm such a pushover. All right. Two more. All right. This is Ramphorhynchus. Ramphorhynchus. You crushed that. Yep. Yeah. That's by far the hardest one, the, by the, the way. The, the one, but if you yeah. had taken out the uh, phonetic oh, spelling. Yeah. No. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Ramphorhynchus. Ramphorhynchus. Okay. What do we got? This is a muscle... That connects the occipital lobe in the back of your head to your uh, sternum. Okay. For unknown reasons. Yeah. <laughs> Unclear yeah. why yeah. we have that. We don't really need it. It's um, like an appendix. Sounds delicious. Um, yeah. um, this is a dinosaur. It, 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 I'm just going to go with what it sounds like. Like a ram. A ram. It's that's got a it's got a big ass fucking horn coming out of it. That's where my head was. Like a, like a large headed dinosaur. A ram for Incas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, baby. Uh, not definitely yeah. not a large headed head buddy dinosaur. Very cool dinosaur. A lot of flying dinosaurs have yeah. been picked Look for at us the here. teeth inside that beak, dude. Oh That's, my god. You don't see that every day. Nah, you don't see that anymore at all. Man, I wonder if they They're have dragon like. Oh, is that is that an actual oh I was gonna say no. Do they have like I wonder if they have actual like fossils of these things? I'm sure. How, yeah, they must. No, right? no other way we'd know what it is. Well, I feel like they make a lot of them up. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> All right, we got one more. One more. One more. One more. Us. For two hundred points. Two hundred. Two hundred points. Two hundred points. points. Cephalderma. Cephalderma. Ah. This is obviously a muscle that is within the face because it says derma, and this is the face. Derma. And derma, derma means, means skin. skin. Derma means you have face all skin. over your body. Nah, fuck you. <laughs> it, it means face skin, and this is a muscle that goes right underneath the eye and right down to the bottom underneath the chin, and it helps your eye stay open rather than always closed. For clarity, whoever is closest wins the 200 points. Yes. yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay, you go next. All right. Uh, sticking with muscle, derma means skin, not face. Face skin. muscle? Nope. Ah, it's on all um, the face wash products. Yep, because it, it means skin. Cephoderma, cephoderma. Uh, Ceph, what does Ceph mean? That's what I was trying to think. Like, what root could there be? I know what it is. Go ahead. Okay. It's um, big, big. Don't fuck it up. Yeah, something something around the hips. It's a muscle around the hips. Okay. I think it's a muscle, uh, the muscle that's right underneath the, your skin on top of your foot. 
Oh. <laughs> All right, we you got. Gra- you grabbed your breast when you said that. Oh, we got a few face. A we got a breast and we got a foot. We got a foot. All right. Oh, oh, that's a dinosaur. dinosaur. And it's a so, fucking super cool dinosaur too. It's like a turtle. That? Excuse me. It's yeah. like a turtle dinosaur. It's like a turtle bug. It's like a turtle gator. Look yeah, at its head. Thing's awesome, dude. dude look at how that. Big how have I never heard of this? This would be my. This is my new favorite dinosaur. Fact. That's very, very cool looking. I like that none of us got that, and we all went derma. Wait, how skin. big is how big is a cephoderma? I need to know this. Cephoderma? You mean a cephodora? Six feet. Six feet. Long. It's big boy. That's an awesome creature. Triassic period, two hundred and ten million oh. years. Ago. I want this on a shirt, man. This is it, this is a shirtable dinosaur. It has dinosaur. elements of a soft shell turtle in the face, right, with the snout. Yes, but then the like snapper, like alligator snapper, mid shell, and then like mm-hmm. a uh, horseshoe crab buttocks. Kyle, Ky- Google Wild. cephoderma closest living relative. I don't know why. I wonder if this... it is the alligator alligator snapping turtle or if it's a soft shell turtle. Yeah, because why doesn't this thing still exist? It has to have evolved into something modern, because it's a it's it's something that could be around in today's world. Pebbly skin—that's what cephoderma means. Pebbly skin. Ah, well, uh, we were right about the derma. Yeah, well, but you were. they ni- named a dinosaur that had pebbly <laughs> skin, not uh, not us. Those Latin fucks. Oh with, man, with well, their word, the entire taken. genus is extinct. I guess so. It can't yeah. have a nope. Okay, no I'm relatives. dumb because the way that dinosaurs went extinct was like full. Full extinction. But you're not done. Yeah, because you gone. Yeah, but not all of them. There are some things like okay. birds are related. To, like the closest living relative of the T-Rex is the chicken. That's wild. Yeah. It's so hard for me to believe. I know. It really <laughs> is hard to believe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it makes me think we may just, there may be a, you know, like we, we looked at the stuff that we thought 150 years ago that was just completely wrong in how we were thinking about oh, it. Oh, yeah. I wonder if there's just a fundamental, like, our understanding of, like, how we say there's this much DNA match, that means it's the closest relative. And it's just And we're just wrong. thinking about it completely wrong, Dude. and that will change in 50 years. Yeah, but you can't say that. You're going to be scrutinized for even thinking like that. No, yeah, we're Maybe we don't, that we might be a little off. We're I'm with you. Canceled. I mean, we, yeah, but. Canceled? Nah. All right, who won? I believe it was me. I believe Patrick, closest. I mean, no one got closest on that one. No, no, Patrick not on got that the most one. Points. The whole game. Patrick won. Patrick yeah. Won. Ah, boo. What a way to what a way to close out the pod. Dinosaur good, or good. or muscle is not my game. It's a fun I have game. Not done well. I, on that I game. learned more yeah. in that game than I've learned in the last twenty pods. Truly, yeah. I think mm-hmm. that is the strength of that game. Like, I learned quite a bit. I'll that, never that remember any listening of it. to Kyle try and pronounce things. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that it's an all around good game. Thank you, Edwin, and. uh Thank you guys for coming here in the new studio. Cheers. Cheers. Do the Cheers. thing. Do the thing. It's fat tire. Guys, go to wildtimes.club forward slash info. You'll find all the links to everything we have, including all of our extra episodes. We do at least four per month extra. That's six total pods, all ad free. You can get that if you go to wildtimes.club forward slash info and you hit up the Spotify or the Patreon. Listen, we love you. No problems here. No problems here. My butt itches. I really do. Where did we find this cue, this music cue? I really uh, like it. 70s porn. It's, it's true. How did you know library. That?